Hello, first of all, I'd like to thank Craig as well. And I'd also like to say um, how proud I am that this is happening in the Midwest as a, you know, as a owner of a business in Chicago. I just want to say it's, I, feel, I feel so proud. So thank you, Craig. Um, I'm going to talk briefly today about the role of auction houses in the contemporary design market. And I'll touch on design art. And while I won't dwell explaining it too much, because it is sort of hard to explain, I'll at least explain uh, some of the role that uh, the auction houses have played in the creation of it. Uh, first of all, I'll weigh in that um, what we deal in is unnatural selection. Um, really, uh, I think, well, sort of self self-explanatory there. So we're going to look at uh, three primary themes. First of all, perception. This is marketing, um, something that, you know, uh, uh, Susan obviously uh, spoke to, but auction houses are very good at marketing. Um, we're also good at recontextualizing the work, and we'll look at how, how we've sort of taken design and put it into a different context, uh, most notably an art world context. Uh, and hopefully we'll look at how we celebrate design. Uh, it's not always clear. Oops. Valuation. Obviously, auction houses are very focused on selling. Um, we help to create the market record. We help to create uh, some sort of price record. Um, and I think that we sort of perpetrate the idea of it being a commodity. Um, these are all not negative words to me, but um, they, they may be to some. Distribution. We're also going to look at sort of a new way that auction houses are actually and becoming a distribution channel. Um, uh, this is a completely new type of distribution, and we'll look at, look at how it's being used. First of all, I just want to point out that the whole phenomenon of a design auction is very new. Um, I opened my auction house in 2000. This is a little chart of design auction houses in America, design auctions. I couldn't even really begin at 2000. It didn't even get on the chart. Um, so it, by 2001, uh, this is Christie's, Sotheby's, Phillips, Wright. Um, some others were about $10 million. Uh, last year, we were up to $82 million. Um, you know, obviously, this year it's going to go down a little bit, but um, it, it's, it's a new phenomenon, I guess is my point. That's sort of the aggregate picture, but I want to look at one quick example, it's sort of near and dear to me. This is a table by Asama Noguchi. Um, I sold this table for the first time in 1996. I worked at another auction house in the Midwest called Treadway. We sold it for $9,000. And I feel so passionate about this table. To me, this is really an example of design art uh, done by a sculptor in just uh, really as a pure expression of, of sculpture. He really, it, it does suit a, suit a need, it does function, but for Noguchi, there, there was not a, not a line. Um, I'll even add that, that um, this, this table, I actually owned this table. It was, I, I bought it locally in Chicago for $500. I tried to... I tried to sell it. I took it to uh, the most important show at the time, which was New York Modernism. I priced it $20,000. Nobody bought it. I finally put it up at auction. This is um, uh, a Treadway auction. I brought $9,000. Uh, later on, after I owned my own auction house in uh, 2006, it sold for $630,000. So that's just a smart, you know, little example of how the market's changed and how um, you know, even the experts didn't know. <laughs> at least I didn't. Uh, so first, perception. Um, as I said, auction houses are very good at marketing. Um, you know, we are editors. Uh, we, you know, we do make choices. Uh, we're probably at the opposite end of curators. Curators spend a lot of time making considered choices. Auction houses uh, make very quick choices. Um, uh, but our choices uh, are impactful. Uh, we just did a kind of a ran random sampling and, and didn't know what was going to be in the exhibit. And it's interesting to see Phillips, which I think fairly has done the best job with contem contemporary design in the auction world. You know, two of their covers, um, you can see two of the pieces in the exhibition. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's a clear dialogue going on. There's also a contextualization, as I said, of sort of bringing design into the art world. Uh, the orange covers is my own auction house, and, and that's a piece, piece of Mark Newsom. It's just a little picnic tray, mass-produced piece that he did. Uh, I'm showing you a, a cover we did with a um, Gerhard Richter painting. You know, the impression of the Newsom piece was also handled in, the, in a very, you know, contemporary way. We were really trying to capture the energy of it um, that is not dissimilar to what's go, going on in the contemporary 
art world. And I think when you really look at design art, you look at auction houses, the, the thing you're gonna see most importantly is, is how they have repositioned the work to be considered as art. Uh, we spend a lot of money producing these catalogs um, that's kind of gotten ratcheted up and may get ratcheted back down. You know, my own auction house has really, really gained its mark through its catalogs, which is an extension of design, and I'm very proud of the graphic design that we brought to bear in the auction catalogs, and I think we helped actually change the industry. But you can see, um, you know, this was, these, these were two pieces, uh, they're Joanna Grounder that we had at auction. Um, we went out, took them on location, shot this incredible shot. Uh, I don't think we sold either piece, uh, which is kind of ironic, but uh, it just shows you the sort of, um, you know, the, the level of promotion that auction houses are committed to. So in kind of looking at design art, I chose um, a Mark Newsom piece, and I chose uh, the pot of drawers that was offered in the Christie's post-war and contemporary art sale. The, this is the evening sale, it was in um, the spring of 2007. The evening sales are like the Olympics of the auction world. I mean, it really is the limousines and the billionaires, and I can't even, usually I can't even get a ticket. I have to like, you know, I'm in the back in the standing room only, I've, I've, I've only had a chair once. Um, within, within the auction catalog, they put in a piece of decorative art. Um, they didn't, you know, label it decorative art. They didn't treat it like decorative art, um, uh, but it is a piece of decorative art. Um, it was Mark Newsom piece. It uh, was offered and was sold for $1 million, slightly over. There's the Lockheed Lounge upstairs, which is his most famous piece. Um, this, this uh, a Lockheed Lounge was actually sold uh, right before this, it didn't make a million, it was sold slightly under, which was incredibly conceived as a, uh, it was widely perceived as a disappointment. Um, I remember uh, sitting there with some friends saying, oh, it's gonna bring, you know, one million, a million and a half, two million, and it, it, it sold slightly under a million, and it was shocking later to realize, I'm talking about a piece of design, and we're disappointed that it didn't break a million dollars. Um, so, you know, uh, I think that you know, it, it was sort of incredible to see what to see what happened. The piece was bought for a million dollars, as I said. It was bought by Gagosian um, publicly at the auction on the floor, uh, reported in the press. Uh, conveniently, Larry had done a show of Mark's work uh, earlier that year. It opened in January of 2007. Um, again, it was an incredible crossover moment for design, um, where you really saw you know, just, I mean, the the premier distribution channel, I'll say, for contemporary art, crossing over and taking a designer. Um, I don't know, so it's, it, it created design art. Uh, the very following lot in the sale was a Yuskavich painting. Um, I thought there was a, a kind of a humorous dialogue between the two. Um, the Yuskavich painting was uh, only six years old at that point. It brought 1.3 million. Um, I think you can debate the relative worth. Um, but I certainly am just trying to illustrate the, the sort of branding of design art. Um, and as was said earlier today, Phillips didn't actually invent the, the, invent the term, but they did brand the term and they used, they used it uh, to sort of, uh, they built it up. I sort of take a more cynical view. I think design art is sort of designed to be sold to art collectors. Um, uh, I think, you know, there's, there's, I don't want to be totally negative. There's, there's I think, you, you look at Gallery Creo and the marvelous work that they're doing is about empowering the designers and it's about using the, you know, taking the time to really, you know, use a new material, really push it, really take it to a place. Um, a lot of design art, I think, falls into uh, 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 the most cynical type of marketing, um, something that uh, my friend Nasir calls uh, fast design. Um, and I think there was a pro proliferation of that. I thought this was a good time to sort of look back at Charles Eames, sort of as a, a, a reproachful uncle, saying that, um, you know, need, the need is, should be the, the, the basis of design. Um, I'd say clearly, we know what need a lot of this design was speaking to. <laughs> Which brings me to valuation. Um, it's important to realize auction houses are really judged on on sales. I mean, it really is our only criteria for success. When the press writes up auctions, 
They don't, say, they don't say how beautiful the catalogs were. They start with the record prices. They start with the past lots. They want to know all the numbers. So we really live in that world. Um, you know, as I said, we've also helped to create this sort of idea of a commodity. Um, I think that that has a negative connotation and also has a positive connotation in so much as uh, I think that the idea that people can sell these goods and that they have value, that there is a market, is, is actually very positive for design. I'm going to take one example, the Campagna Brothers. Um, I, I will say that I think the Campagna Brothers are great designers. They're very talented. Um, but I'm going to look at one example, which is an example of an auction price directly changing the price structure uh, in a very, very quick way. Um, this was 2005, an auction in Sotheby's in New York. It took place uh, about two weeks after the first Des Design Miami show, um, which was important. Murray Moss uh, was not part of the show, but he set up a special exhibition. He had these chairs in the window. Um, they were priced $13,000, I think, maybe, uh, you know, right around there. You can negotiate a little bit. Um, he did sell them. Um, uh, Sotheby's had one, eight to 12,000. It brought $66,000. It's not the Mark Newsom money, but it is, uh, it's pretty significant if you're the Campagna brothers and you're selling your chair to Murray or Murray's, you know, however, they, whatever the deal is, Murray's retailing them at 13,000, the Campagnas are getting three, five, two, I don't, I don't even know. Um, that changed things pretty quickly. Um, they, they, they started to, in, in not, not just the Campagnas, but I think all designers started to take notice and to say, well, you know, how do, how do we get in on this game? Um, one way that they chose, um, which I think, again, I, I, I find this as a rather cynical example, um, was a co-brand, an actual co-brand with Disney, Philips Auction and the Campagna Brothers to create this limited edition chair, um, taking what I, th you know, initially the, the idea of this chair I think was actually kind of wonderful, but then I find this iteration of it just, well, like I said, uh, rather cynical. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, distribution. Auction houses, we just saw how they can affect the price. Um, you know, auction houses have gotten into the distribution game. Um, uh, I chose a slide of the auctioneer at the Damien Hurst auction, uh, Sotheby's. Uh, Incredibly important auction, I think you will see. Um, at the very end, I'll talk about the, the, the current crisis and how that is sort of maybe, if not maybe, how it has affected the landscape. Um, but the Damien Hurst, he went around the gallery system. He went directly to the auction house and distributed his work through Sotheby's. Um, it was incredibly successful. The timing was uh, very lucky on his part. It got out the door before everything imploded. Um, and he uh, realized just about $200 million. Uh, which is, you know, a, a staggering sum of money. Um, if Mark Newsom wanted to dump Larry Gagosian and said, I'd like to present my work at auction, an auction house would do it in, in, in a second. And uh, so I sort of made a pretend cover of my auction just to show, <laughs> <laughs> just to show the idea. Um, and the reason I don't think this idea is going to go away is, is, and, you know, I'm not up here arguing that we can get into later maybe the, the positives and negatives of this, but that distribution model has been put out there and it's not going to be abandoned. I think you'll see that it will come back um, because it can, it, it, it can be lucrative. Auction houses uh, have also started to do um, exhibitions. Um, uh, Phillips, Art Curial, uh, Pierre Berger, and, uh, and myself have done contemporary design exhibitions um, where we've uh, commissioned work and we show the work and it's sort of an extension of the work we're doing and, and uh, you know, the promotion that we have ongoing um, uh, for our auction catalogs. I think that it's an interesting option for designers. I think it's, it, it is really important for designers to realize that auction houses are not galleries and they really don't have the care and commitment that a gallerist would have to, uh, to, to the work and, and ultimately to your career. Um, I say that as an auctioneer and, and it's, um, I just think auctions are really built around selling, they're built around a very fast pace, they're built around a lot of, uh, you know, on to the new and the next. So it is, um, 
you know, it's, it's, it's part of what we do. I don't know if it's, it's, if it's the best that we do. I'm just going to leave with sort of one thought. Um, you know, the economic crisis is changing the game. I think it'll actually have a positive influence on design. I think that the, the impact of design art um, was not all negative. I don't want to paint it that way. I think there was a lot of energy and a lot of excitement. Um, but clearly, there were a lot of excesses. Um, and I think that there'll be some correction. And I think that that, that um, is healthy. But if anyone doubts the power of auctions and the, and the, and the power of the auction houses, uh, we can look at just last month, Yves Saint Laurent, power of a personality, of course, um, but also the auction process. This uh, little Eileen Gray chair was, uh, I thought, fully estimated at two and a half million dollars if you did the conversion, um, and it sold for a whopping 28 million dollars, which is a just a quantum leap over anything else from the 20th century. Um, it's probably a huge percentage of Craig's budget, acquisition budget. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to leave you here with this Thomas Demand, just sort of this construction, and just to understand that you know uh, all the glitters is not gold. That um, the high prices, I think, I hope, offer excitement and opportunity for designers working today. Um, but it's a, also a little bit of a cautionary tale. So, thank you.